I would like to see what those bus loops will be before we do that. I mean, I know we have to do the abandonment, but I want to see the plan for how they're going to handle this when we do this abandonment because all we have is abandon the roads and what I don't want is somebody coming back later going oh we didn't think about how we were going to do the bus loop later that's gone yes sir there is still a second step to this process this is simply a notice of the proposal to of an intent to abandon you would still have to come back at a future date and actually adopt a resolution to formally abandon that. I would just like to have the schools add to this what the additional bus loop was going to be so that we understand the impact when we do this. Okay, before you actually go forward well, with this. That will be up to the board, but that's one of the questions I had, and I'll go to the other board members, but I don't want to be later on trying to figure out what we've done and then what needs to be fixed to undo what we've done because that bus loop is now different. Mr. Taylor, you have any, any questions? I'm just listening to what he says. From what I can understand, what, what you're saying, Mr. Fincham, is that this is not to actually eliminate anything, but to start the process, and then once the elimination is to take place, we will vote on each one of those separately? Yes, sir. By, by code, there, there is a two-step process, or potentially three steps. But in terms of, of actual resolutions by the board, you have to adopt two separate resolutions. This one is at the beginning of the process. You're, you're basically notifying the public that you are proposing or you intend to vacate these two routes. There is a public notice period and a period for comment, and people can actually request a public hearing during that process, at which point in time the board would have to actually conduct a public hearing. If there are no such requests, then you as a board can go to the next step, which would be the adoption of the second resolution where you formally uh, actually vacate that right of way. We're not there yet. So having said that, I don't have a problem with doing this since it's only to make notice or get the process started. We're not actually vacating any roads. So I don't... I don't see the problem with it. I guess I just want to make sure people understand what the new bus loop is going to be so they know whether to request a public hearing or not. Because they may not understand okay. what the implication of this is. Okay. That's fair. Mr. Black? I guess, and maybe Mr. Fincham. Mr. Fincham. Mr. Whiteman's indicated he's actually on one of the... Uh, uh, committees related to the uh, constructability of the, the schools. Mr. Whiteman indicated that he's actually seen a, a preliminary site plan um, with the proposed uh, additions and relocations on it. So we can actually forward that to you, Mr. Seeley, and to the rest of the board if you'd like to see that. And I think that the, everybody that's interested in this will probably be curious where those are. Yep. And we'll, we'll include that as part of the noti notification okay. information if that's acceptable to the board. Okay. Mr. Underwood? Uh, okay. Mr. Whiteman, could I? Just... Yes, sir. You said you have, you've been privy to the drawing for the, for the proposed? Yes, sir, I have. For Madison. For uh, Madison and for the high school? Yes, sir. Any issue in terms of? As far as you're concerned? No, sir. None I've changed? seen. Uh, the setbacks are an issue. That's, uh, I believe, on the board tonight for expedited hearing, but mm -hmm. that's just for the addition of the school to the, the front. front. The but the bus loops, I, I'd see no issue with. Okay, so there's no safety issue that's going to be created? No, sir. We, based on the, on the new, on the new um, route? Yes, sir. We've okay. taken that into consideration. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Mr. Akers? Well, I have no problem with what they're trying to do. My concern was when you read the, the agenda, uh, it says uh, that to propose a resolution proposing to abandon school bus routes. Uh, but if you look at the, you know, if you read what's in the booklet, it says access. And there's a difference between the two. I didn't know whether you were talking about routes that leading into the route, uh, into the schools. And my question was, why do we have any authority over that? The school board does those type of things. So, and that's... When we, when we advertise in the paper, 
I think we need to make perfectly clear that it's access to the school that we're abandoning the route of and nothing else. I agree. When I first saw it, I thought, yeah. we don't have anything to do with bus routes. Yeah. So I, I, I do want to make sure that that is clearly laid out and that the ingress and egress for the bus loops right. is included so that people understand when they look at it, we're not getting rid of something on signboard road or someplace else, right. bus route wise, because that's really not in our purview. Right. Having heard the um, details of agenda item F, um, I would I would just like to friendly amendment that to add the ingress and egress of the new bus loops to those drawings when it's advertised. If I could have a motion to that effect. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Black, second by Mr. Taylor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, I had pro sort of promised uh, the treasurer that we would do eight. Mm -hmm. I think we can do eight quickly. Yeah, I know. that. That's really up in the air. Mr. Chairman, that's a quick question. Yes, we sir. just voted on the amendment to it. Do we now have to go back and vote on the original or the, the newly stated resolution? Or is it fine? It might be fine like it is. I don't know. But it sounded like we just voted on the amendment to F. We're, gonna, we're just going to add that to the resolution. Okay, that's fine. As long as Thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay. We're going we're gonna to make that addition to the resolution before it gets signed so that okay. it gets advertised. Okay. So we don't have to vote on the resolution again? I don't believe so. Not tonight. Not tonight. Do we want to try to do eight, or do we want to go to closed session? And Beth want to do eight? Is she ready to do eight? Are you ready to do eight? Oh, she's pointing to Alan. See, I don't know who this agenda item is for. I'm just oh, looking at the treasurer. Since her name is in it, I figured it was her. Mr. Pardon, can we do this fairly quickly? Mr. Chairman, I think that is going to depend on the treasurer. Um, what what we have done is uh, there's been some discussion regarding this this topic since the treasurer's report, and we have identified in the board packet measures that the board has or the treasurer has rather uh, to collect delinquent revenue to give you an idea of, of uh, the tools that are in place and to facilitate a discussion as to whether or not there's anything we can do to uh, to try to increase collections. Uh, so that is the introduction. With that, uh, staff had planned for there to be a dialogue with the treasurer regarding the, the topic. I knew Mrs. Kern was going to end up here. I just didn't realize that we were going to hand it off like that. Um, I, I've read what's in the packet. Um, Mr. Akers, you want questions? I'll start at this end. No. Good evening. I don't know what... <laughs> You know, I don't know what you're not doing, to be honest with you, Beth. I know that uh, you certainly go through the court process and your Virginia Debt Set-Off program and the DMV Stop program is in place. Uh, I don't think you publish delinquent taxpayers, uh, or do you? We have not done that yet. We have talked about that in a couple of staff meetings. Right. And um, I am preparing to change the wording on the delinquent notices for the spring two th or the you know, 2014 first half so that that's an option but that would be um i think i would ask for the boards you know that you want me to publish that because it can run up well it can be costly i remember back many years a uh, number of years ago we did we put it in the, in the local paper a list of everybody that that had not paid the taxes it got to be expensive uh, and then it became uh, Difficult because they would argue that hey, I came, I went in and paid the taxes, and it may have been paid on a Monday, and the paper came out on Wednesday, and so it became a, a, a <coughs> an issue with people, and it is embarrassing for some people. Some people don't care. I understand that, but but I think a majority of people would. It's embarrassing to see that name in the paper, owing uh, money for that taxes and what have you. I mean, it may be a way, and I'm with 
technology today we have seen, I believe it was Northampton County that has, they published their top 30, top 40 delinquent accounts. Some of those, um, you know, we may have them set up on a payment arrangement. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, but they would still be part of that top yeah, yeah, 30, yeah. 40. And was, so. I don't know what, it used to be a full page ad because you yeah. had that many that were delinquent. Well, and it was, it became costly as well. It could be pretty good size. <coughs> and I, you know, I have no, no, really have no problems, no thought, thoughts on it uh, uh, as far as the putting it in the paper. I mean, hey, it may help some. Mr. Underwood? Mr. Um, Karen, I, see, I saw the list of um, strategies that you've tried to collect. Is there any support you feel this, the board can give you to assist in this matter? Is there anything that you can... I mean, the list is quite extensive, and I think you're doing a, a great job here, so I don't want to belabor this or make it into, into something or say that you're not doing, certainly. But if there's any support, certainly, I want you to know that from my perspective, um, the board is willing to lend its support to Well, I appreciate that. Can. I mean, I could use a couple more staff people totally dedicated to collections, but um, I, I mean, I think the ones that we have are, you know, are doing a good job. We've got some part-time people that are working on that. And we do have two full-time people that that's their total, that's their total focus. They're dedicated, right. Okay, so. thank you. Mr. Black? Yeah, Ms. Curran, uh, uh -huh. first of all, I'd like to uh, thank you for your efforts. Um, I guess I'm one of the ones who um, kind of uh, brought this up. And it was, um, the number was 900,000, 900,000 from the uh, last couple of meetings, I guess a couple of meetings ago that were owed. And, back personal property that we had. And I understand that number that number has Im has improved dramatically. So I want to thank you on your um, I want to thank you on your efforts for that. I guess from my perspective and I'm I'm sure the board feels um, I'm not I'm not going to speak for the rest of the board, I'll speak for myself. Um, we're getting ready tonight to put a uh, fairly sizable tax increase um, you know down on the citizens of Caroline County. Um, and um, I think it's very important that at the same time when we put those taxes down, we also it's fair to be fair to everyone that we collect from everyone. If we're not the collections, I guess that was my big, my big concern. Right. Um, on here, I just had a couple of things. Um, what are some things? What are some strategies that are on this list? I saw a whole list of strategies. For example, like I saw in here, uh, wage liens. Is that something the county is doing right? The county. We have is we have been doing those for a number of years. The, you are doing the wage mm -hmm. liens. Okay. So okay, that is. That is taking that is taking place. Um, I guess I didn't realize that that was taking place. How on the nine hundred thousand um, that was? I see the number that was like six hundred has been recovered, or close to seven hundred that has been recovered. That's in all categories, in all the uh, personal property. Is that six hundred? Is that um, just delinquent? Thousand. It's the two thousand thirteen. Yes, so all the delinquent. Okay. At this point, it's all. And and uh, Mr. Akers had mentioned in the past we did um, you did put the p publication in the paper. It was actually before my time. I I've, I've never advertised um, the list. I don't it was back in late eighties. Uh, okay. have, have you talked to other uh, localities that do it to see if it's a it's an effective strategy or? I can, you know, would talk to Northampton. I have not talked to them yet to see, you know, what kind of direction you all um, wanted to take. So um, it is, uh, I'd be happy to talk to Northampton and find out other localities that are publishing that and see what kind of success they have. I mean, we've had, I feel like we've had good success with sending those delinquent notices, the fact that we've sent them all and, you know, we, we got in a sizable amount um, by that March 11th date. And now we're working the ones that, you know, it's kind of like at county sticker time, the ones that would come in and pay by the, you know, to get their county sticker. Um, you know, and then you'd have the ones that you actually had to really track down. So, so of the, like, the 900,000 that I'm seeing for 2013 outstanding, um, how, much, how much of that has been collected? Do we know that or? Yes. Should be on that first page of the revenue summary. Yeah, you're down to 347, so a little 500,000, is, is that correct? Get it out. Current personal property, 
It says the balance. Of that 900,000, it should be the 556 027.80. Almost expensive. It's been collected. Plus, then we've gotten the additional money that's coming in from debt set off on the 15th of this month. That's pretty good. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, I was just asking Mr. Cully if that was in the budget, and he's assuring me that, that that has actually been looked at to be put in the budget. Mr. Taylor, any questions? Yeah, well, just, just one or two. Uh, most of them you, you've, you've kind of hit on. I, I guess the, the question that I would, would have is, do, do, do we know the percentage of delinquent taxes that say due to things like, you know, deceased persons or, you know, bankruptcies? Because I know some of it, well, I won't say not collectible, but I would imagine that some of it is probably difficult to collect. Uh, and, and, and what I was going to suggest that maybe if we could get uh, an idea of, of just how much of the taxes that are out there that may be not related to the deceased people or bankruptcies and that kind of thing, and then we could kind of get a, a better picture of what amount of money is out there. Uh, and the other thing is that I know you would ask for a... I think an additional staff person, but of course we kind of said we weren't um, going to increase any, any staff. But if we're going to spend money, you know, I guess I would like to see maybe a recommendation from your office as to what you think we, we could do that we're not doing, and, uh, and maybe go from there. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Akers, you said you had one more question? I do. Uh, Ms. Kern, and, and we've talked about that, uh, this particular issue, a couple of years ago. All of White County, they put in a program uh, that, uh, and it's been about two or three years ago now, and from talking to some of the board members from that locality, uh, they felt like it was benefiting them. And I think it had to do with maybe... Um, prepaid? Pre yeah, prepaid, yes. that type of stuff. And it, and it benefited them. Have you talked to the people from All of White and just... I, I, I think, I mean, we've got that option. I mean, okay. you can prepay your real estate and personal property taxes now. But we don't, I mean, we don't there's don't an make option on our, on our e-treasurer site where you can go on there and prepay, but it's maybe not highlighted enough. Yeah, that's maybe what I'm with saying. the new web, you know, we can yeah. highlight that. And yeah. so. They seem to think it, would, it has benefited them in Isle of White. Uh, okay. So uh, maybe if we promoted it more and highlighted it more, uh, it, it may help us some. We've well. got coupons, I and mean, we did a whole section, I think, on prepayments. So right. Trying to encourage that. Thank you. Can we? Um, uh, let me just ask the, the poll the board on this. Can we have the treasurer go ahead and look at potential of advertising and revisit this? Let's say in in June, first meeting in June, and, and talk about advertising, either everybody or top fifty or, or or some. Take a look at your numbers and see how many it really is. Well, it would have to wait till after we sent the delinquent notices again, right. so that but right. we can come, certainly come back and revisit. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying we're going to do it then, but it would give us time to at least talk about it and, and set some direction and how we want it to go. Right. Um, but it may be interesting to see how many folks we're talking about. Is it an entire side of the newspaper? Would we do top 30, top 40, top 50? I mean, we can talk about all those options, and you may have more information then about what works best. I, I think there's an option using our software that can produce the list. So we okay. can take a look to see how many there are. Okay, that'd be great. No other questions? Thank you. Thank you. I guess we're to the point, how about if we take a 10-minute break and start again at 7.30 and we'll pick up from there. We are taking a break till 7.30. I'm going to reconvene the Caroline County Board of Supervisors meeting. It's a few minutes later than I like, but at 7.33, we're doing better than normal. Um, at this time, I'd like to open the floor for public comment. Anybody wishing to comment on anything that is not? And we don't have a public hearing, so I guess now we have one public hearing. Anything that's not on the agenda for public hearing? Um, we will take comment on. 
So at this time, public comment is open. Anybody wishing to speak, come on up to the mic. Public comment, anybody? See a none once, twice, three times, closing the public comment section. We're going to move on to public hearings. The first public hearing and the only public hearing tonight is a proposed amendment of Chapter 10 of the Code of Caroline County to change the name of the Caroline County Industrial Development Authority to the Caroline County Economic Development Authority. Um, Mr. Wilson, I guess you will start off. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, this public hearing is a repeat of a previous public hearing on this topic on the advice of counsel to allow for a more specific public notice to be advertised, which has been done. Uh, the content of the uh, name change is the same as it was before. Um, there is no implication in the name change for any of the contractual arrangements the IDA has ever made in the past, nor would it affect uh, its recent uh, vote to support the resolution for the borrowings uh, that it conducted on the 3rd of April. Um, it is simply a name change, sir. Okay, any questions from the board at this time before we open the public hearing? No comments. Uh, the public hearing is now open for agenda item four, the proposed change for chapter 10, Code of Caroline County, Virginia. Anybody wishing to comment, please come forward. Anybody wishing to comment on this item, please come forward. Once, twice, hearing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Um, board members, any questions for Mr. Wilson? I guess I just have one, yes, and um, I guess I'm a little, maybe it's just for council or I'm not sure if it's for you, Mr. Wilson, or council. I guess my question is, we've already voted on this correctly before we have, we have indeed voted on this correctly. What, what exactly is the reason I said more descriptive? What is the reason we've had to go back and do this the, um, a second time and ad re-advertise? Well, we, th we think the ad for the public hearing was defective, and if that was defective, then, or, you know, it could easily have been argued to be defective. I don't know if a court would have held it that way or not, but um, if the ad in the notice is defective, then the public hearing is invalid and therefore the ordinance is invalid um, and called into question. So we felt it was prudent to cut off all of those potential problems at the past, so to speak, and re-advertise and um, just readopt what you had done before. So there couldn't be any question. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from board members? Hearing no questions, is there a motion to adopt the proposed, the, the amendment to Chapter 10 of Caroline County to change the name from Caroline County Industrial Authority to the Caroline Economic Development Authority? So move. Second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Mr. Aker, second by Mr. Underwood, thank you. Um, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. The motion carries. Thank I you, just sir. want to take this opportunity for one second, um, and I meant to do this earlier. For those of you in the board that haven't met the new social services director, director Tanya Christian is the new social services director, and she's just here to watch the board meeting tonight, which I thought was great. Um, you know, we're moving along in social services, I think, going in a good new direction. And she's now, you know, head of the ship there. So for everybody that hasn't met her or seen her, I just wanted to introduce her. So thank you for coming, Tanya. Unfinished business. It's our favorite one. I'm, I'm sure Mr. Fincham is always glad to come up. Um, an ordinance to amend the code of Caroline County by repealing chapter 45 erosion and sediment control and replace it with chapter 45 environmental management which just means more money right uh, it would have <laughs> mr. chairman members of the board um, you have before you tonight the proposed amendment to the county code related to the stormwater management regulations uh, I am pleased to report to you that the governor did in fact uh, sign the uh, I believe it was SB 423 was the bill that he actually signed that uh, 
significantly amends the stormwater management requirements for local governments, including Caroline County. Under the new regulations, the board actually has to opt in to the stormwater management program. So you have to tell the Commonwealth of Virginia that yes, you want to participate. Um, without going into great detail in all the stormwater regulations, uh, and we've discussed, I think, at length the issues and concerns staff has had with, with the regulations and the program uh, as it's being developed. The, the new regulations require us to opt in. Uh, staff has advised you previously that if that bill was signed that we would recommend the board not opt in at this time. Um, there are still, I think, a significant number of discussions that, that have to be held at the state level uh, as well as with local governments. The regulations require DEQ to adopt a schedule to allow local governments to opt in annually. So you will have an opportunity again in the future to opt into this program. There will still be some regulatory changes to coordinate the new stormwater regs with the Chesapeake Bay program that we've had in place for over 20 years now. So, so there will still be some changes we have to do. There still will be some coordination that we have to do. We still will be responsible for Ches Bay, but anything over an acre will be the responsibility of DEQ. So we will still have to coordinate our local program in some respects with the state program. Um, but again, given all the issues we've discussed previously, uh, it would be staff's recommendation that we not opt into the program at least at this time. One of the things we learned at the, at the uh, George Washington Regional Commission is Stafford's estimating the first 10 years this will cost them $30 million, just, just so everybody on the board. And then one of the, one of the counties on, on the lower Rappahannock is estimating it's going to cost them in the first 10 years $40 million. So the reg is going to come. My understanding, if I'm, not, if I'm correct, is the first five, there's three five-year periods. The first one seems to be the least expensive, the second one the most moderately expensive, and the last one's the most expensive. So the way I see it, we're exempt from the first five years, at least for now, or if we don't opt in? Yes, sir. I, I think we're going to have a lot. <laughs> we're down here at this level. We also have a DEQ and the state having to coordinate with EPA. Right. Um, and, and many of the regulatory actions in part are driven by EPA. They're telling Virginia what, what the, the Commonwealth, what it expects from the Commonwealth in terms of a program. Uh, so there's still a lot of moving parts to this. Uh, I suspect there will be a point in time where either it makes sense for us to, to join the program or again there's new regulatory action that requires us to join at some point in time in the future. Um, certainly, if we become what's called a, an MS4 jurisdiction, then we would be required to, to right. uh, join in the program. So, there's no easy answer to this. Do we do we need to take action on this tonight, Mr. Fincham, or do we do you need a vote for this to move forward, or is this one of those that's moving anyways? I I think we could just defer or pass by. Uh, Questions from the board, Mr. Taylor? I guess my only concern, and, 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 and it sounds like we probably don't want to opt in, but if we, if we accept that, what if there's an issue? Where does that leave us as far as um, responsibility or, you know, um, does, that, does that put us in uh, a, a, a position where we could face numerous expenses I mean there's got to be there's got to be some negative or the possibility of some negative for not opting in. The, the concern I think has always been with projects that are greater than an acre in size. So under under 
the new legislation, localities that don't opt in, all of that gets transferred back up to DEQ. I would argue that there was already a local requirement. I would argue that DEQ was already required to be involved in that process even under the old regulations because the permit issuance for any land disturbance greater than an acre still rested with the Commonwealth of Virginia. We had to coordinate that process. We had to make sure that the state permit had been issued. But I would argue that, that one of the arguments that's been made is coordination, and it may take longer to review plans at the state level. I'm not sure that's necessarily the case. Given the site plan process, given the time frames for uh, agencies to review and approve those plans, I'm not convinced that that coordination is going to be as much of an issue as some would make it out to be. Okay. So what happens if at some point we change our mind, if right now we say we, we choose not to opt in? What, what happens if we hit an issue or we change our minds and decide to? Yeah. D DEQ has to come up with the regulations to allow us or any other locality to opt in at least annually. So next year we can reconsider that this issue. Okay. Well, that's all I have. Mr. Black? Not at this time, Mr. Chair. Mr. Underwood? So, so Mr. Fitzgerald, just to make sure I'm clear, right now you don't see there being any issue or us in any way being in harm's way because we do have opportunities to opt in later on and it will continue to be so. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Akers? No, sir. I'm understanding then that we don't really need to take a vote unless we're not opting in and this is going to roll forward no matter what we do anyways. So we'll just sit back, wait a year and see how this actually pans out for the whole area. Yes, sir. We still may, in all likelihood, we'll be back with some changes to coordinate stormwater with our existing Chesapeake Bay program. Okay. But we don't expect that it will be the magnitude of, of these regulations. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Fincham. Agenda item number six. We have already held the public hearing on the uh, utility rates, and I believe at our last board meeting. And at this time, we need to take action to actually raise water rates only, not sewer, and then the return check policy, I guess, are the big ones that are, that are currently outstanding that need to be voted on. Um, Mr. Colley, are you going to? talk a bit about this or is Mr. Sheevil? Oh, Joey, I'm sorry. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, tonight's unfinished business uh, is in reference to a proposed amendment to section 93-1 of the Caroline County Code um, is named schedules of fees and levies for public utilities. Um, there is a recommendation to raise the water rates for our water customers by 5%. Uh, what that means is that an average customer using 5,000 gallons of water would see a $1.18 increase on their water bill. Uh, a commercial customer with an inch and a half meter using 52,000 gallons of water uh, would see an increase of $12.53 on his bill. Uh, the estimated revenues generated from that are $42,853 annually. Um, some of that is aqua fi figured in for a six month period. Um, so the overall budget amount of the 42 is what we expect for the annual. Um, the following year there will be a reduction in the overall income with the loss of uh, that customer. Um, also in here is a return check fee. Um, the public utility uh, rate sheet is $30. The treasurer's office current coll currently collects $50 for any other return fees um, underneath of her department. So we would then <coughs> match that so that when we have a return fee for utilities she could actually charge the 50. Um, also, our after-hours connection fees, we were recommended to go from $80 to $100 uh, to cover staff time uh, as we're paying overtime for staff to come out after hours to reconnect um, water services. With that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Schiebel. 
Mr. Taylor, any questions? No, I don't. Mr. Black? Nope. Mr. Underwood? No, sir. Mr. Akers? We all went through the public hearing. I don't think we had any comments. Had one, one comment. One comment. Just asking what he would get out of his dollar increase. Dollar increase, water right. And I think we, we talked about all that has been done. And he did agree that the water quality had improved. Quite a bit. And, and come to find out it was on the hot water side of a water heater um, at the Lady Smith Village Residence Club. So, so yeah. it's probably the anode rod in the hot water tank. Yeah. It, due to the um, quality of water that we, they used to get in, in the iron in the system at that time. Um, <clears throat> since there are no comments, I guess, what's the pleasure? I'll note everybody hit their button at the same time. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the uh, amendment to Chapter 93, um, Section 93.1, uh, as recommended. I have a motion by Mr. Taylor. Second. Second by Mr. Black. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. I have dissension. Uh, Mr. Mr. Taylor? Aye. Mr. Black? Aye. Mr. Underwood? Nay. Mr. Akers? Nay. And I vote aye. Motion carries three to two. Agenda item number seven, which we had discussed at our last board meeting, and I know it is not Mr. Underwood's favorite topic. I do believe staff has a, a better idea on how to, how to actually carry this out. And Mr. Schiebel, I will talk to Mr. Culley this afternoon. I'm hoping you and he have discussed this, and I will let you go on. The, uh, myself and Mr. Emerson have spoke on this quite a bit. Um, the service district fee... Um, that is would be assessed is, is basically a tax that the Board of Supervisors would set at this time. Um, the proposed uh, 10 cents uh, that staff had proposed would generate about a $48,000 uh, to that. Um, it is part of an assessment the Commissioner Revenue would issue. Uh, it is something that would be part of their tax bill that they would get on uh, a biannual basis. So that is the only way the tax district will work. Um, however, with Caroline Pines being a separate area uh, and being different from the county system, the state code allows for a fair and equitable rate to be charged. Um, so what that means is we need to make sure that we're fair in what we charge the citizens. Uh, and it was felt through Mr. Emerson that we could charge a different fee to the residents within Caroline Pines underneath of our water rate. So we could increase our water rate, our base rate basically, um, to be able to generate funds that way. Uh, we would then be able to track those funds not as efficiently as we could the tax district. That money would be come in and be part of the overall uh, revenue stream that we would receive in the utility budget. Uh, we would be able to do a, a monthly fee. Um, instead of us charging our base fee of $16 now, uh, we could charge, let's just say, $20 instead. So every resident would pay four additional dollars, uh, if, just using that as a, an analogy, um, and they would pay that every month as part of their normal utility bill. So that is something the board could do instead of having to raise taxes um, for that service district alone. Uh, and, and we think that that is something that would fall underneath of uh, what the state considers fair and equitable. Yeah, I want to do the math on 360 times 36. So that comes, you know what the rough number on that is, Mr. Schiebel? We, I was just using that as an example. I mean, we've looked at a couple different things. One of the things we looked at doing was right now we're charging $46.67 a month for the availability fee. Um, once that fee went away, every customer is currently paying an average of just over $70 a month for their water bill. Once that 4667 went away, um, that service, that, that fee, the base fee, we could raise that to generate additional money. And as long as you didn't go over the 4667, they wouldn't be paying more than they are currently. Um, if, let's just say you were to charge $40 a month as, as on top of their current 16 for their base fee. They would be paying less than they are today, and we'd be able to generate funds that we could utilize within that uh, area to start upgrading those lines. 
I know that the upgrade is something that we're going to eventually have to do, and, and even at the 10 cent rate, it was going to take 10 years to raise enough money to do one whole line, which I think is going to end up needing to be done sooner. <clears throat> um, I know there's been a lot of discussion, and I know that this is actually to move forward for a public hearing, I believe, on this to actually advertise it. Mr. Taylor, question? Ant, or anything? I guess um, how does what we just did, along with what we're talking about now, how does that impact uh, this, this particular subdivision? And we just, we just voted to raise rates. We, and, and that we will see a 5% increase, but that goes towards the entire utility fund um, to help offset costs. That's basically, that increase is going to debt service. Um, we are now covering 100% of the operations of utility. Any of that money that's generated will help offset debt service. And, and I understand that, but, I, but it, that doesn't have any, I mean, they're still paying it. It, went, still up, paying it went up basically a dollar if we did what Mr. Sheeb was saying, it would go up $5 a month, and $4 of that would go into a fund to give us the ability to fix the system in there if something were to happen to it. Plus, we're supposed to be planning long-term to actually replace the main line in there, which is about a half a million dollars, and if I, I'm not mistaken. It, we were looking to do half a half million dollar increments, or, or 250000 is actually what we were looking to do, um, and start doing that um, every five years at it, it, it the, the worst case scenario. Um, we've got some lines in there that we would like to target um, year five that are on our radar that we want to get done and, and hit immediately. What do you think those would cost, Mr. Schiebel? Each section we're looking at doing is, is about a quarter of a million dollars um, in the phases. And we're looking at doing a phased approach because we wouldn't be able to do it any other way. Um, we're tracking. We've got a map that we actually track every leak that's within the system. Um, so we're able to track where we're having our issues at. Um, there's one piece that goes basically in front of the residence club in there um, that is basically the, the, our first uh, course of action. Um, that would go from the end of the new line we just installed, um, basically down Shannon Mill Drive to where the new piece of C900 pipe that was put in about five years ago. Um, that seems to be a place where we're having some issues and would be the first on our radar. And that's about 250000 That small piece, we could probably do it for an estimated 100000 to complete that section. And then we would start doing street by street. And, and my point is, Mr. Black, go ahead. I mean, what, what I'm looking at is, is the maintenance that's going to need to be done in there. And I understand that they're paying a connection fee now. But in five years or four years, even, it, even it, with, the, with the $4 a month, it's going to raise $17,000 a year. So even in four years, you won't have the 100000 that Mr. Schiebel's going to need to replace that first line. Four dollars a month, if we assess them later at a much higher rate, they're going to be a lot less happy. One of the things we consistently hear from water customers is, raise it little by little, don't try to hit me all at one time. And I think a five dollar raise now gives them a four dollar insurance policy down the road because you're, in, as Mr. Schiebel saying, that in, in the five year plan, which we're already two years into, they're going to need to replace that line, which is going to be at least a hundred thousand dollars. I'm just trying to look proactively at, and, at the system. And I understand what you're saying. I'm just thinking in terms of the, the tax rate that we're getting ready to assess in a few minutes, plus what we're doing here. The tax rate itself is going to be an issue for a lot of citizens. I mean, we're, we're going to do it, and I mean, that's the way it is, and we've talked about that. And I know how we got to that point, but I'm just saying they have they're going to be taxed like all the other citizens. And in addition to that, they're going to be looking at this increase as well. And that does concern me. Okay. I understand it's needed, but it concerns me. I'm just saying it's pay now or borrow later. So, Mr. Black? Yeah, I got a couple things. Uh, first of all, the um, 4667, you said, um, that's for the, that that's what they're paying right now for the, uh, the, the availability fee, right? That's that. correct. We actually issue two bills. We issue uh, every month a water bill, um, which is an average of $25, and then we issue a availability fee bill that they're paying interest-free over five years. And that goes, <laughs> that goes away in four years, three it's years? It's a five-year interest-free. Five years from now it goes away? It's five total. We've, we're, we're heading into the second year now. So we've got, okay, so we're just heading into the second no, year. Almost finishing the second year, I should say. I, I guess my concern and, um, is if there's a catastrophic problem down there with those, with those pipes, they were made a service district, correct, or is it sanitary district? Sir, 
service district. Sur there were many service districts, so that way that the, they would pay for their own repairs, correct? That's correct. Um, if there is no money set aside for those repairs, forget the availability fee, that's all done, that's all in the past.